All right, I'm going to deal with uh, the comments today. And um, BRL, he's got a great question. What is the mark of the beast? He says, I can post my thoughts in vid or comment, but I want to hear your thoughts first. Uh, he enjoys it. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. So let's get into this because it, it's really simple. Um, but people are confused because um, there are so many that like to preach this Hollywood fantasy of a zombie eclipse. And so in this zombie eclipse, there are people walking around with uh, microchips in their hand and in their foreheads. And um, only those that don't take the microchip, only those are saved. So you don't need Jesus Christ. You just need to not get this microchip in your hand and you'll be saved. Now there's also another element that teaches, well, um, this is after the return of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Antichrist and comes and rules and he's going to make everybody have this mark on their uh, right hand or on their forehead and um, only those that, you know, <laughs> I, I can't explain it because it makes no sense, but that's what they teach. Alright, so none of that's true and so in order to understand what the mark of the beast is first let's let's uh, conclude if you will that this is only in the book of Revelation alright so like if we go to Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 we're not gonna find the mark of the beast all right, so we have to keep everything in context. Now, now uh, there's also people that want to relate it to the mark of Cain, and I don't think that's completely unrealistic, if you will. But it's a separate thing. <laughs> it really it has no direct influence or impact if you will uh, there's no direct correlation I should say uh, between the mark of Cain and the mark of the beast no direct correlation at all the mark of the beast is only in the book of Revelation and the book of Revelation is a spiritual book so we must discern things spiritually and uh, if you are uh, carnal or if you are, um, you know, a fleshly, if you have a fleshly mindset, a worldly mindset, you're going to see this in terms of physical things. If you are spiritual, you ought to see these things in a spiritual sense, okay? So, first of all, when we get into the book of Revelation, it, let's understand the context of the entire book. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto, the, unto his servant John. Alright, so, this is... A unique book in the sense that it's teaching us the spiritual things which must shortly come to pass okay and um, so if we go to Revelation 13 for example let's how many we got seven of these so let's just cover every mention of this and see see if you can see it for yourself okay <clears throat> revelation 13 verse 17 and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so you got three identifiers here the mark of the beast the name of the beast and the number of his name so this um you have to put all three together 
in my opinion. All right, everything I'm giving you is my thoughts. So when you put all three of these together, and you um, you have to <clears throat> excuse me, uh, you have to understand what it's referring to, and it's very clear that this is in reference to the beast. Now we know who the beast is by understanding the entire Bible, in particular the book of Daniel, which talks about the fourth beast. Uh, I've said this many times, and the fourth beast has to be the Roman Empire. There cannot be any other possibility. Now, understanding the Roman Empire rules the entire world, we can therefore conclu uh, conclude that the beast is the people in power, right? The ones that rule over the entire earth. And so this, no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name, or the number of his name, is all in reference to your political organizations. And there are not sep these are not separate entities, they are one entity. You want to call them left wing and right wing, they are two wings of the same beast. Alright, so the context of this is people are worshipping their political organizations. Alright, they're worshipping the left wing or the right, uh, the right wing, which is still the beast all right no matter when you look at one side or the other side it's still two sides of the same creature and that's who people are worshiping and that the fact that no man might buy or sell because of this beast is further evidence that this beast controls the entire world and so you think of whatever country you live in that country is still under the great woman in Revelation 17 or the great whore excuse me not the great woman the great whore of Revelation 17 alright so just I don't want to skip anything here so let's go and check this out the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth so whatever country you're in you think oh you got a great uh, leader in your country well the woman reigns over that leader right at the very top of the pyramid is the great whore now I hope that I hope that explains it I hope that's real simple to understand that the beast is in power and the people that worship the beast are those that are looking at their political organization. Uh, this is directly connected by uh, politicians, the political parties. All right, so if we go to, this is important to understand. We go to what the word worship means. Now, when I was young and trying to figure out what this stuff man I just thought you know it means to bow down because you see so many people teach it to bow down to get down on your knees and to wave your arms or whatever bow down your head and that's one form of worship no question about it but there, this worship means uh, a variety of things it always has a title of honor in fact um, people you can call somebody uh, worship, right? But I want this to me, for me, this puts everything in perspective. Honor, respect. When you honor your political party, you say, you know, Barack Obama was the best president ever. We need him back in office and all this sort of thing. That's great honor for a man. But when you turn that into honor, for the politician, that's 
that's having respect or worship for the beast all right and the beast is the political system respect same thing honor respect civil deference not indifference but deference civil deference so oops so we go Revelation 13, Revelation 14, and it, the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and the image that he portrays, uh, you think about uh, what they tell you on TV, these guys, these political leaders, they are perfect in every single way. They never sin, and everything they do is God breathed, okay? That's the image that they're portraying and that they lord over us and they have all the answers they have all the solutions for all our problems and that's the way people view them and you're not being honest with yourself to say that people don't view politicians as the ones with all the solutions that's the way they present themselves constantly it's, this has not changed this has always been like this since I was since I've been alive and so to receive his mark in, in your forehead or in your hand is to, you know, honor the beast with your thoughts and your uh, words at, or with your hands, the work that you do. It's the things you say and the things you do, right, when it comes to the mark in your in your forehead or in your hand spiritually speaking so if we could see this might this might take too long here do a word study on hand on mark on forehead and it shall be upon Aaron's forehead that Aaron may bear the inequity of the holy things all right so um, talking about forehead ball so if you are so your forehead doesn't mean you have to have a physical piece in your forehead all right it doesn't mean there has to be a microchip in your forehead all right and think about it if that was true nobody would do it the saved or unsaved this is not just a Christian thing where people are suspicious of this idea of the microchip all right now there's no doubt that they would like to microchip everybody but they don't need to okay they already know everywhere you go where you're at right now where you've been they know it all without it so they're not going to gain anything by microchipping everybody nevertheless okay so there uh, there are physical marks on the foreheads right but in revelation this is not a physical microchip or nothing of the sort and verse 11 and smoke and torment ascend up forever and ever and they have no rest day or night who worship who respect the politicians and the image that they present and whoever receives them receives the name of them all right so if you look at this in a spiritual way it, it all makes sense now it's one thing to to uh you know to see this but you I mean to read this but you got to apply this to what's happening right now otherwise it's vain you come up with these wild eyed theories and they're not applicable to what's going on in the world today then it's all in vain you have to apply what you're reading with what's going on right now you have to if you don't you have no understanding and you're just making it up and that's what people do Revelation 15 and I saw as it were 
a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten victory over the beast, and over the image, and over his mark, and over his name, the number of his name, stand on the sea of glass, having the harps of God. So, again, this beast is represents a kingdom. And it's in a spiritual kingdom of Babylon. It's the fourth beast of Daniel. And it's the worldly kingdom. And this worldly kingdom is going to crumble. Guarantee it. So all this about getting victory over the beast, over his image, over the mark, over the number of his name, these are all one thing. And they're all together, they're all clumped together, and they're all going to be defeated. And we, we defeat them right now if we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have victory right now. And that victory is going to be finalized upon the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Revelation 16, And first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image that they project onto others. So, all of this here. So, you think about the noisome and grievous sore. It's talking about all of those that are not saved. There are not going to be people who avoid the noisome and grievous sore, and yet who are not saved. They're all going to have this noisome and grievous sore that are not saved. All right. Revelation 19, And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image these both were cast alive into the lake of burning a lake of fire burning with brimstone so think about this now the everybody the way the world is set up everybody that does not put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ puts their trust into this alternate worldview that is being presented from the time we're born to the time where we die we go through life being presented this alternative worldview that is separate from our Lord Jesus Christ so if you're gonna you're gonna put your trust into somebody whether it's Jesus or whether it's the world it's gonna be one or the other all right if you understand that then you understand that this is talking about people uh, that are putting their trust into the spiritual Babylon which is the world which is the powers of this world the powers of the people in this world the political systems that's who's controlling this world and now the, a good question will be who's who are the politicians running this world? Well, you know, it's, in my opinion, they all come from, they're all people with a lot of money. So, uh, where do they get that money except for the corporations? Okay, so anyway, in Revelation 20, And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them, and I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And again, this is another reference um, making a distinction between the saved and the unsaved. So anybody that is not saved automatically worships the beast they're automatically putting their trust in the political powers and you know it, you could say they're putting the trust in astronauts well astronauts are under the political entities and that 
political power goes all the way up the pyramid to the very top of the pyramid which is the great whore of Revelation 17 and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the Great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth this is not physical you you don't you, we're not being told to look for somebody that has that written across their forehead this is all speaking spiritually okay so <clears throat> you know I could probably talk about this and just you know for one do a word search of everything uh, that we talked about here you know beast mark um, do a word search on forehead hand mark and that that would be a good study but let me just encourage you to do that on your own and you know for example you do a word study on the 62 mentions it's not that many but just make sure when you're reading every single mention that you understand the context of each uh, each mention <clears throat> okay and then once you understand the context of each mention that could help you help clear any uncertainty when it comes to the book of Revelation alright so that's my thoughts it's not a physical look nobody's gonna get a a microchip in their forehead that's not gonna happen 